Welcome to the Microsoft Azure Database Self-Help Series. This video covers how to identify and troubleshoot Cosmos Database the Request Rate Too Large Error, also known as Throttling, or 429 Errors. We'll show you how to determine the percentage of throttled requests out of the total requests, and then we'll show you how to identify the cause and resolve it. First, let's understand the Request Rate Too Large Error in Azure Cosmos Database. This error occurs when the request units consumed by data operations exceeds the provisioned number of request units per second. For example, if you have a resource provisioned with manual throughput of 400 request units per second, you'll see error 429 when you consume more than 400 request units in a second. That brings us to the question, can 429 occur in autoscale? Yes, 429 errors can also occur while using autoscale. This happens when you've consumed more than the maximum request units per second provisioned for autoscale. Another common question is, why am I seeing 429 errors in the Azure Monitor metrics, but I'm not seeing them in my own application monitoring? By default, any client using Cosmos Database Software Development Kits will automatically retry despite the 429 errors, and the request will succeed in subsequent retries. When this happens, the 429 status code is not returned to the application. In such cases, the overall rate of 429s is typically quite low and can be safely ignored. When you see 429 errors in your application or your Azure Monitor metrics, it doesn't necessarily mean there's a problem with your application. A small percentage of 429 errors is normal. Whether you're using manual or autoscale throughput, they're simply a sign that you're maximizing the provisioned request units per second. Knowing that, Let's learn how to identify what percent of your requests to your database or container resulted in 429 errors compared to the overall number of successful requests. From your Azure Cosmos Database Account Blade, navigate to Insights, Requests, and then Total Requests by Status Code. You'll want to filter to a specific database and container. Here, you can see your total requests and number of requests that returned 429. You can calculate the percentage of 429 errors from this data for your business justifiable duration. This percentage is important. It will help you determine if your rate of 429 errors is below the threshold of 5%. In general, for a production workload, if your percentage of requests ending with 429 errors is between 1 and 5, and your end-to-end -end latency is acceptable, you can rest assured that the RUs are being fully utilized. No action is required. If more than 5% of requests are being throttled, continue with this video to learn how to investigate the cause. There can be multiple reasons for throttling. The first step in troubleshooting throttling is to check for a hot partition. Hot partitions arise when one or more logical partition keys consume a disproportionate amount of the total request units per second due to higher request volume. This can be caused by a partition key design that doesn't evenly distribute requests. When this happens, many requests are directed to a small subset of logical or physical partitions that become hot. To check if there's a hot partition, go to Insights, Throughput, and then Normalized RU Consumption Percentage by Partition Key Range ID. There, you'll want to filter a specific database and container. Each partition key range ID maps to one physical partition. If there's one partition key range ID that consistently has a much higher normalized request unit consumption than others, this can be a sign of a hot partition. An example of this is when one partition key range ID is at 100% for multiple hours a day, but others are at 30%. In the short term, you can temporarily increase the request units per second to allow more throughput to the hot partition. Please note, this will lead to over-provisioning and higher costs. You can also choose to redistribute current throughput across partitions by allocating more request units per second to the hot partition and fewer to the others. To address this issue for the long term, prioritizing cost and performance, consider changing the partition key. The partition key can't be updated in place. To do so requires migrating the data to a new container with a different partition key. Azure Cosmos Database supports a live data migration tool for this exact purpose. If there's a high percentage of rate-limited requests, as in greater than 5%, and no hot partition, check to see if your overall consumption is higher than the configured throughput using the same metrics. You can increase the request units per second on the database or container using the Client Software Development Kit, Azure Portal, PowerShell, CLI, 
or ARM template to determine the right request units per second to set, follow our best practices for scaling provisioned throughput. We just outlined two scenarios in which you may see 429 errors. Remember, as long as your overall rate of 429s is between 1 and 5% for a production workload, and your end-to-end -end latency is acceptable, you're simply maximizing the request units per second you've provisioned. If you see more than 5% of requests being throttled, start by checking if there's a hot partition. Consider changing the partition keys for the long term. For a short-term solution, increase or redistribute your request units per second across partitions. If the overall consumption is consistently high, increasing request units per second is the best way to resolve the issue. If you don't find any of these causes for 429 errors in your Cosmos database, please contact Microsoft Support for further help and investigation.